Namaste. Uh, welcome to uh, this video where I want to share what God has done in my life with you. Um, I had done an earlier video in Hindi and a lot of you had told me to do and present my life story the way Christ touched my life in English so that you know, for those of you who did not understand Hindi or do not understand Bengali, you can hear this and be blessed by it. If you have friends who you think need to hear the gospel, you can also share my story with them so that they would know, you know how awesome God is. So without further ado, let me tell you what you know who I am, how Christ touched my life and how I was and how I you know how he changed me. So I was born in a uh, in the city of Calcutta. My name is Shatavdi Banerjee and I you know was a born was born in a very conservative staunch Hindu family. You know so conservative that when you come to my home um, you know, even today you can see my father and, you know, sometimes even, even some years back, my own grandfather when he was alive, you know, we, I don't know how many hours in a day we used to spend in the top room of our house, which was dedicated only to the idols. And we would spend hours, you know, my grandfather would spend at least a good in a day, three to four hours. My dad would spend about two to three hours. And then my grandma would spend another hour or so. So in a day, we would spend a lot of time with all the gods and goddesses that I grew up and I thought was, you know, the ones whom who created me the ones who is the true god and th that's how i grew up and now when i was born i was very sick and to sick to the point that you know until my grandma dedicated me to the goddess kali goddess kali is the most um well known and so-called powerful goddess in West Bengal. And if you know any Bengali, they can vouch of the same. So if you think about this, you know, growing up, being dedicated to goddess Kali, my family were disciples of Ramakrishna. Ramakrishna was like our uh, entire family. They were uh, disciples and you know, had taken diksha or you know was a like a legal form of becoming a disciple uh, a, pr a process of becoming a disciple uh, having a guru uh, who was also um discipled by other people it's almost like a, a a system that is there in ramakrishna mission if you are aware of it then you would know what i'm talking about but just my whole family we were dedicated to uh, ramakrishna his wife sarada and uh, his disciple swami vivekananda so as we were growing up uh, following the teaching of ramakrishna i believed that there is one god and you might call him krishna and I might call him Christ and somebody else might call him Allah, but it is the one same God. And this is the concept I grew up with. And because of that, you know, I used to really look down on Christian missionaries because I thought they did not understand this very simple concept. So um, as I uh, started, you know, uh, as I was growing up, we used to celebrate you know, our religions, that was like all the Hindu religion, all the festivals, all everything, 
you know um and then we used to celebrate christmas we used to celebrate the birth of buddha so just we were very religious but at the same time uh, we always wanted we thought that it's all the same thing it's the same very it's like one uh, all the rivers are ending up in the ocean just like that all the religions end up uh, in the uh, reaching the same god and so uh, we used to celebrate all kinds of uh, festivals and every christmas my mom or my dad would give me presents in the name of santa claus and we would sing carols we would do you know cut cake for jesus and i remember this because you know from very young age you know we respected christ did not want to do anything to do with christianity but we were very devoted to our gods and goddesses and coming from a hindu brahmin home brahmin if you know is the highest caste in hinduism the levites the priests you know in uh, if you if you want to use the uh, terms in the bible um, like such kind of people they we were the religious leaders and you know we would have grand festivals in fact i was the one who was always pushing them to have the biggest uh, festivals in our home as possible you know uh, d- you know make food for the idols decorate the idols invite all our relatives and friends and we would just ha- worship the idols and just we were so dedicated i was so dedicated um and I just had one goal that I wanted to please the gods so that I could you know meet them I could be with them I could be close and intimate with them uh so just I was walking and going you know my life was in that way I thought yes you know I was um I thought and you know, I growing up I, and my birthday was on the birthday of Ramakrishna. I thought, you know, yes, I think I'm very close to God, and I always had that kind of feeling. But at the same time, I had another part of me that nobody was aware of. You know, I I had committed so many. I had not uh, robbed a bank, but there was everybody has a skeleton in the closet. although my family looked at me they thought i was like an angel my grandparents would be so proud of me but nobody knew my inner heart and you know but still that was one part that we know, you know you and you would know if you know think about your life and you would be like yeah that, you know that's not a big deal you know but the other part was what everybody sees and that was like all good so I, you know i was going my life was like this um and then uh one uh, particular christmas time my mom had given me a children's illustrated bible and it happened to be so that uh as i was um you know as i got that gift i never wanted to read it because you know i did not want to do anything to do with christianity and i did not want to do read christians books and everything um I I I was a avid reader I loved story books I loved fairy tales I loved every kind of books uh, encyclopedias so my mom when between my 10th and my 11th grade kept nagging me telling me you know you read every other book in the shelf except for this particular book and why is that you know um I spent so much money buying it but I did not want to read it because I did not care about what Christians thought um I just respected Christ because you know I thought he is just like one of our gurus or you know that's another religion leading to the same path or he's god or what have you um and so I I did not want to read that but in my 11th grade I had a catholic friend and just to know her and stop my mom from nagging I decided to read this children's illustrated bible and I told my friend I read the bible I liked the stories that was a lie because you know i never really understood anything you know it was not even the words of the bible it was just stories written in simple language with pictures and i i didn't know what was going on i mean what was this book about so um i just kind of like bluffed to my friend 
and she never cared anything about it because she never read the Bible herself. So, you know, but I started feeling very guilty. And now why did I tell this lie? You know, I knew that other part of me, which was hidden, nobody knows. And, you know, this was just another sin added to my list. And I thought, man, um, why did I do that? And as I was feeling so guilty, every year from Gideon's, they used to give us New Testaments. I never wanted to read them. Never. But this year, just to make my words true, I started reading it. And as I read it, initially, if you read or take a New Testament and start reading, it's the Gospels that talk about the birth, the life, the teachings, and the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I thought, yeah, Jesus Christ is just like one of our gurus. He taught good things. He did good things. Bad things happened to good people. They put him on the cross, and the rest is, yeah, whatever. Uh, so, and I thought, yeah, like our guru, Ramakrishna, he was heavily influenced by the method of Christ's teaching and some of his teachings as well. And so was Swami Vivekananda. He always respected Christ, you know. Um, so I thought, yeah, like this is like more original and this is uh, what influenced my family guru and, you know, Swami Vivekananda, whom everybody respected and I respected and I adored. And so this is definitely a better quality teaching. Uh, but nevertheless, it's the same thing. Uh, so I just uh, went uh, through the Gospels and I went through the book of Acts. I did not understand what was going on. But then, you know, as you come in the next book is after that is the book of Romans. And my dear friends, if you read the book of Romans, I'm telling you this. If you read it with an open heart, you will see God talking to you. The first chapter in the book of Romans talks about all the sins. Let me read out to you one particular verse from this. It says, uh, God, the book of Romans, the epistle that is a letter to Romans, and chapter 1 and verse 8. And it says that, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. And it goes down in verse 19, it says, Because that which may be known of God is manifested to them. For God had showed them into their heart. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world were clearly seen. So you see, my friend, it talks about an invisible God. You know, and I thought, yes, that's exactly what Arians, when, you know, my forefathers, the Arians, when they came, they never had idols. And that's what we remember every time there was this Durga Puja time, you know, uh, in the Mahala, the couple of one week before Durga Puja, it's called Mahalaya. And in that time, um, uh, we always remember this fact and you know, how it's all started with nature worship and you know, no idols. But then my forefathers, who were the first rishis, you know, they made idols. And I thought this is so true because it says, you know, uh, the invisible things, you know, what we did, you know, his glory, his power, these were all evident in the nature. But um, in verse 21, it says, because, uh, you know, that when they knew God, they did not glorify him, uh, glorified him not as God. So, you know, they thought in verse 22, they thought themselves to be wise. If you remember as Brahmins, that's what we consider ourselves as wise. And so at verse 22, it says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. So when they changed the invisible attributes of God and made idols, and that's what it says in verse uh, 21. It, you know, I thought that's very true. They thought they were wise, but they actually changed the invisible attributes and made it visible. So that's completely not wise. That's completely foolish because God is invisible. You know, uh, so I thought about so many things, um, you know, that even as philosophically we as Hindus believe. And I thought, man, this is so true. And it talks about all the sins. If you read verses, you know, uh, 20... Um, 7, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. If you read these verses, it has all the sins you can ever imagine. And, you know, all that you can see today around you and around me in our society, it tells all of that. And I thought, you know, the society that I belong to has gone away from God. And then I came to chapter 2 and it spoke about how, you know, the, the religious people, that's 
my own people and you know, we you know be it brahmins be it bengalis we have gone away from god and it's like you uh, know one blind leading the other into destruction because our my forefathers made all these laws you know and some of these laws and i thought to myself you know um, who gave me the right to say somebody who is a shudra or an untouchable or a dalit you know they are anything worse than i they have two eyes and two ears and one nose just like i do and one brain and you know b r ambedkar think about him he was the first president and you know who gives me right to say that you know he is anything lower it was my own forefathers who made those rules and if you know that is what i am thinking as the perfect religion there's something wrong because my forefathers made those rules for our benefit not everybody's benefit um so you know i thought you know the the caste i was so proud to belong has gone away from god and then chapter 3 it talks about from how from head to toe i have sinned and i remembered all, all the dark part of me that's like the a uh, skeleton in the closet you know that you have and i have and that nobody knows except for you and me in our deepest part of our hearts and you know it was like we have sinned so much and even though people look outside and they think we are so amazing and we are so good but inside our conscience tells that we are not so perfect and it says you know how we all have gone away from god and nobody is perfect and nobody seeks after god and i thought you know i'm doing all this religious activities but bible and god says you know i have gone away and i thought if god is holy and he is the judge how is it he is taking all the flowers i'm giving all the money i'm giving and all the food i'm giving and he's all happy with that and if he is just how can he just gloss over how can he just look over all of my sins and accept whatever i'm giving him if he is judge he cannot accept me and my sacrifices and my offerings but if he is simply accepting it then he is not a just judge and if he is not a just judge he is not holy god and i was like if god is holy he cannot accept me i know and then i just kept reading and then i came to romans chapter 5 and verse 7 and verse 8 and that is where god ch- you know changed me that is where god touched my heart that is where god opened my heart because the verse says for scarcely for a righteous man one will die perhaps for a godly man one may even dare to die but god demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners christ died for us and this is the love of god because it says you know while i was still sinner in order to accept me the just god the just judge he had to pay a price he had to he could not gloss over he could not look over he could not just simply forgive but he chose to take and pay my price my punishment for all my sins and all my failures he took it on himself and died on the cross and i just remembered you know all the sufferings that i had read in the gospels the way you know christ was you know i thought like you know because i had thought bad things they put the crown of thorn in his head i had said bad things they spat on him they plucked his beard i had you know i had told lies you know he got the beating for that you know i had done bad things i had stolen even though it's not a big thing but still a sin is a sin and i had stolen even as a young child and i you know christ's hands were pierced i had gone away from god and his legs were pierced you know god took on humanity and he took your place and my place and i think thought at that point you know all my 
sins, he took on himself and he paid the punishment for me. He suffered my consequence and head to toe, he replaced me. And I'm like, man, and that is love because only love has will sacrifice himself. Only because of love can one sacrifice himself. You know, no other reason can one sacrifice himself. Only if somebody is deeply in love will one sacrifice himself. And I thought, you know, of all the gods and goddesses I worshipped, you know, the sloka that I remembered at that point was the main sloka of Gita, Yada yada id dharmasya glani bhavati bharata adbhutyanam adharmasya tadatmanam srijam riham paritrana sadhu nam vinashaya dushkritam dharma sangsthapa narthaya swambhavami yuge yuge. If um, you know, Vishnu would come in ages, it would be to destroy the wicked. And I was a wicked man. I was a wicked woman. And you know, even though people looked outside, they did not see that. But God who sees my heart knew that I was, I was a sinner. I had sin in my heart. You know, I, I, it, I was, I have a lot of things that people can't look outside and say, but I knew my heart and God knows my heart. And that is why he took my punishment and he died. And only he of all the gods and goddesses I worshipped and of all the gods and goddesses I read about, I know I told you I love to read. Only he broke the power of death and sin and rose again. Not even Krishna, not even Yudhishthir. And now the most righteous man who lived in Hinduism, Yudhishthir, he also had to taste death and he also had to taste Naraka, that is the hell. So, but it was Christ, God, who took on humanity. He paid my price. He broke the power. The giver of life rose again from death. Death could not hold him back. And he is said, he, and I remembered, he said that, you know, in, if you read John chapter 1 and verse 11, he said that, you know, he came to his own, his own people, but his own people, the Jews, did not reject, uh, receive him. But as many as received him, if when I received him and if you receive him today, to them he gave the right to be called the children of God. So my dear friends, if you have not received him yet, will you do that today? Will you say that, God, I admit that, yes, I have so many things in me. I can tell that I am not perfect. And I know that I did not deserve you because you are a holy God. But you took my place and died on the cross for me. I believe in you. I believe that not by my good works that I can go to heaven, but because you took my place and my sins are forgiven because you suffered and died for me on the cross, that I can go to heaven. And um, I believe that you know it is not because I am good enough to be received, but because Christ is giving his righteousness to me. Today in him, I am complete. In him, I am accepted and you're willing to give me the right to call you daddy, to call you Abba father. You know, I have that right. And so thank you for that. Thank you for loving me. So, you know, if you, my friend, from the depth of your heart, have this honest conversation with God, not the picture of Jesus, because we don't know how he looked like, not any picture of any Mary or anybody else. Go to your creator, speak to your own creator and talk to him and reconcile with him. Ask his forgiveness. Ask the Lord Jesus to forgive your sins because only he died for you, my friend. And if you have any questions, 
please feel free to come or you know, send a comment or follow us on Facebook or the YouTube or whatever so that you know uh, and re reach out to me reach out to us so that you know we can pray for you so that we can support you and in, in, in spiritually and if you have a question read the Bible start reading the Bible you can read it online if you just go to you know Bible gateway you can start reading um from the new testament from the book of matthew onward or you can read or you can get a new copy of the uh, bible and start reading but read the word of god and i pray that the holy spirit would speak to your heart and open your heart just like he did for me and that you would know that jesus christ is so good taste and see that the lord is good may god bless you my dear friends uh, god's name be glorified